If you watched some of my previous videos, you will probably have seen my disc sander, which is basically a drill and a melamine disc mounted into its chuck. And the drill I used here is really not good. The chuck has a lot of play. And to compensate for that, I put on a little bearing at the end here. So the disc won't deflect when I push against and sand here. But what's special about these discs are the mounting flanges. I have four discs in total and every one of them has this flange and it's made from some solid shafting material. And a friend of mine turned them for me. They run perfectly true and they allowed me to mount them in a drill. So here's the flange and it really runs totally true and it also has this little tip in the middle that helps me to find the right center of the disc. But just recently I recognized that this shaft has exactly 12 millimeters and that's a common size for bearings so if I could just put a bearing right here and right here and a pulley in the middle I could build a disc sander that's powered with an induction motor and I could also use a bigger disc than I used here. And with two bearings this should run better than with this cheap drill. So here's what I came up with. I have a 30 centimeter or 12 inch disc mounted onto one of my flanges. Here are the two bearings and the housings made out of wood and the pulley in the middle. And here is the little motor a bit under one horsepower and it works great so far. The belt I used here was just for testing and it's way too long. So I got myself a shorter belt and next I'm gonna put this in here and the motor will sit on top of here. Here you can also see a little bit more of what I put together there. It's mainly made from scrap material and because I didn't know how well it would turn out I didn't took a video of it. But then I saw some potential in it and I thought it's worth making a video of it. My first attempt on mounting the motor worked but it wasn't sturdy enough and I got too much vibration so I came up with another solution. So now with the smaller belt I can mount the motor on this frame right on top. The motor shaft was very short so I had to cut a rabbit into the frame to move it closer to the pulley. The frame was then just screwed in place. Then I marked where to put the holes for the motor mount, drilled them and fastened the motor with a carriage bolt, washer and a nut on both sides. Now the motor was mounted really rigid, but I was still getting too much vibration. The disc itself was not 100% round, so I set up to turn it round. And I had to be very careful to not get a catch. To test if it's 100% round, I laid the turning tool flat onto the disc and if it doesn't jump, it is round. But there was still too much vibration, you can see the machine moving off the workbench, so I had to take it apart to balance the disc. To find out the heavy spots of the disc, I'm gonna use this very easily running ball bearing. You can clearly see that there is a heavy spot in the disc, so I marked where that is and removed some material from there. So now with these two balance holes, it is pretty much perfectly balanced. No more heavy spots. So let's put it back together. It was still not perfect, but close enough for me to go on. I bought some self-adhesive sanding discs with 60 grit, that's what I used in the past and it worked good for me. This machine is not a finishing sander, it's more a shaping sander. 
And I also wouldn't recommend to go any higher than 80 grit because then the discs would wear out really fast and you have to change them frequently. And that's really not fun with self-adhesive discs. And if you watch close, you can see that the disc I put on is not perfectly round. Then I started working on the table. It's just a simple frame with two boards. I didn't want to go through the trouble and make a proper tilting table because I never needed one yet. So I could use the disc tender now as it is, but the disc has a little bit of deflection. And I knew that I would run into this problem because the shaft of my flanges aren't really long enough. So what I want to do to fix this problem is to mount this rollerblade wheel behind the disc. And this should prevent the disc from deflecting. With this wheel the machine got a little bit louder, but that's not a problem because I always wear ear protection. Then I made sure that the table is square to the disc. It was really close and shimming with just two layers of paper brought that on square. You can see that the light gap is even from top to bottom. And then it was time to do the first sanding test. The 60 grit paper makes a lot of dust pretty quick, so I definitely need to hook up dust collection. Therefore I used a force bit to cut a hole into one of the sideboards. My method to get tear out free holes is to drill until just the tip of the drill reaches the other side then turn the piece around and finish the hole from that side. And to finally fix the vibration issues I put on some rubber feet and with these the machine stayed in place. So now the sander is basically working and in the next video I will finish it up.